Hi guys, hello and welcome to another Java programming tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn to extract from the civil ID the date of birth. Civil ID is generally 12 digit long and in that location number 2 through 7 is where the date of birth is located in the format YYMMDD. If in your country civil ID uses a different format then you can change the code around. I'm just giving you the bare basics. I will be showing you this code in the console application as well as the graphical user interface application. I will be using Java Swing because most of you are still on Java Swing. Uh, you can always convert that to an equal in JavaFX code if you are using JavaFX. I teach both of them in different classes. So anyway, let's get started. Here we have declared a scanner object. This is a console application. And I'm running a loop to make sure that the incoming input, it's a, it's a post do while loop because I would like to first accept the input from user and then check to see if the length is 12 or not. If it is not 12, if it is less than 12 or more than 12 in both of those cases, it will go back and will ask user to enter the ID again. Once user enters the correct ID, I will be using the substring function to extract all the characters from the second position through the seventh position. So because the first position is zero in a string, so one basically means the second position. So this will give me the entire date of birth. From where I will be extracting them in this format, DDMMYY. Again, you can change the format around based on how you need to generate the output. In this date, the first two digits are year, the next two are month, and the next two are the date. That's why to extract the date, I'm reading the last two, starting at four, going up to six. Then here, which is right in the middle, is the month, which is the middle of the six. Notice I'm working with date of birth now, which holds the six. I'm not working with the entire civil ID. So this will give me the middle two, and this will give me the first two. Let's test this. So what I will do, I'll enter zero in the first placeholder. This will be the year 2005. So I'll enter 05 for the year 2005. November 22nd, and followed by one, two, three, four, five zeros. So total 12. As I press enter, notice it extracts it to be the 22nd of November, the year 2005. Now, if I take this date, rerun it, but this time enter maybe 13 digits, it comes back and yells back. If I enter less than 12, again, it asks. It will only work if I enter the 12 digits. So that is a very brief, short solution for a console application. If I take this to a graphical user interface application, I'm using Swing interface, so I'm using JFrames. It is implementing Action Listener because what I would like to do is I'll show you uh, the interface so that it'll be easier for you to understand. I have a couple of text boxes, one to accept the civil ID and one to display the date of birth. Then I have a couple of buttons in the middle, one to reset the form and one to extract the date of birth. So the ID and the DOB text boxes are for that purpose. Then I have a couple of labels and a couple of buttons. One says reset and one says extract date of birth. In the constructor of the class, I'm using a grid layout here, which has three rows and each row has two columns. I could use other layouts too, but I'm just using grid layout easier uh, for the demonstration. And I have a label that says enter your civil ID followed by a text box that goes in the first row. The second row has a reset in the process button. The third row has a label and the, the date of birth text box. I've made the date of birth text box editable set to false. So it's non editable. And then uh, reset in the process are as you click on it, it will going to um, perform the action. 
I'm setting the title of my frame, Civil ID Process. It is visible, size, and upon close, it will terminate the application. Because what happens when you don't have line number 33, if you close the form, uh, the application is still running. This red, the, the red square is still red. It doesn't turn gray. Anyway, now let's come down to the action performed. So when somebody clicks on reset, what it does, it simply clears out the two items, the text box for ID and for the date of birth. And if somebody clicks on the other button, then it goes to the else. In the else, I have an if and an else. The first thing I want to check to see if the length is not equals to 12, then display an error message to the user. So let me enter shorter than 12 and click on extract date of birth and you will see this error message, okay? Now, I, I just wanted to show you here that the second parameter goes as a text and the third parameter goes as a title. So let me switch it around so that you can see how it works if you haven't been exposed to J uh, option pane show message dialog. So let me run it again. Okay, so let me enter this time more than 12 and again I get the error message here okay so uh, G option pain dot error message will um, show this little icon here so what I'll do after that is I'm automatically clearing all the text boxes and request focus will put the insertion point blinking inside the text box which is for accepting the ID in case the user has entered the correct number of uh, value, for example, uh, zero, I'll use the same one, zero, 2005, November 22nd, 12345. So when I click on extract date of birth, it now extracts the date of birth exactly the same logic. I'm using the ID text .get text method to extract the six digits into the date of birth and from the date of birth I extract the last two slash the middle two slash the first two and put it as a text for the date of birth. So I hope uh, these two different demonstrations would have helped you understand how to use the graphical user interface applications also how to implement the buttons and how to use the if conditions the loops and all those constructs that you have learned in the previous classes and also uh, to look at the console application of the same idea so whatever applies to you you could use one or the other or you can use both of them as a basis and um, you can use the JavaFX application so it's up to you however you want to implement this so don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel take care guys see you in the next tutorial bye bye